Hello and welcome again. Uh, in the last video, I taught you about the basics of cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma and knowing how to draw the diagram of squamous cell carcinoma is equally important. Uh, now, this is the diagram which is given in your Robbins and uh, here it is showing the gross and microscopic features. So, here you see uh, this is scalp and uh, scalp, you know, uh, it is a sun exposed area, common site for uh, cutaneous SCC and it is showing this nodular growth which is ulcerated. So there is a uh, nodular and ulcerated growth and the squamous cell carcinoma manifests as this in the gross. Then in the microscopy, you see this is the normal stratified squamous epithelium till here and here the malignant transformation is taking place. So this is a normal stratified squamous epithelium. It is called so because it is stratified. Stratified means that uh, uh, this is multiple layered and then it is composed of the squamous cells and this is the epithelium which is lining the skin. So stratified squamous epithelium and here you see the lining epithelium it has thickened, it is increased in thickness and also the this is the basement membrane. So it is breached here and the atypical squamous cells they are growing downwards into the subepithelial tissue or the dermis and they are forming the nest and tongues, these atypical squamous cells and they are infiltrating the dermis here. So this is invasive squamous cell carcinoma and here there are the lymphocytic infiltration around this tumor. So when we are drawing the diagram of squamous cell carcinoma, we need to know how the normal stratified squamous epithelium looks like and then what are the changes that are seen in squamous cell carcinoma. So let's start. Uh, stratified squamous epithelium of the skin, it is composed of multiple layers. The uh, basal layer is known as stratum basale and it is uh, composed of low columnar cells which are perpendicular to the basement membrane and they have got this elongated nucleus and in this layer, basal layer, there are interspersed melanocytes also. Then uh, the next is multiple layers uh, which are known as stratum spinosum. They have got these polygonal cells with a central nucleus. So this is the spinous cell layer. Next is the stratum granulosum and these are ovoid cells and they have got these keratohyaline granules in the in their cytoplasm. That why that is why it is called stratum granulosum. Then topmost layer is the stratum corneum which is um, uh, composed of this keratin and in the mucosa like in the oral cavity mucosa or anal canal mucosa where this there is stratified squamous epithelium. In those epithelium, this stratum corneum has got the nucleus also, but in the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, this, this has lost its nucleus and there is this a layer of keratin. So this is the stratum corneum layer. You should remember that in the mucosal epithelium lined by the squamous epithelium, there is parakeratosis means the nuclei, they are retained in the stratum corneum, but in the skin, there are no nuclei in the stratum corneum and there is keratin. So this is the normal epithelium and when it becomes uh, neoplastic then these all these layer they show dysplasia. Dysplasia means there is disordered architecture. All this orientation is lost uh, like in the basal layer I told you that it is perpendicular to the basement membrane then there are multiple spinous layers. All this orientation is lost and there is just proliferation of these atypical squamous cells. These atypical squamous cells, they are showing the properties of uh, nuclear hypochromatism. Then nuclear pleomorphism is there. The nuclear borders will be irregular and there will be vesicular chromatin and this prominent nuclei. So these are the properties of the individual atypical squamous cells. So we, you have to make a big round cell having a nucleus which is having irregular nuclear membrane and in the center you will draw this prominent nuclei. The cytoplasm is having the uh, eosinophilic cytoplasm because it has the keratin. So this is how you make these atypical squamous cells. This is the basement membrane and the basement membrane it is in the normal epithelium it is intact but when there is invasive squamous cell carcinoma then there is a breach so you can see that there is the breach in the uh, basement membrane and then these atypical cells they will be 
growing downwards into the dermis this is the invasive carcinoma and in the dermis these squamous cells these atypical squamous cells they are arranged in the form of a nest and then in the well differentiated squamous cell carcinomas there is keratin production leading to the formation of keratin pearl so how you make a keratin pearl in the center we make the laminated layers of keratin like this and then that it is surrounded by these atypical squamous cells so these are the squamous cells and in the center we will draw that the nucleus with the typical properties of dysplasia so uh, in the diagram of squamous cell carcinoma you make the normal epithelium then adjacent to it you make the dysplastic epithelium where the malignant transformation is taking place all these cells they are pleomorphic and uh, hyperchromatic there is nuclear hyperchromatism and uh, you see that there will be increased mitosis also you draw mitosis like this here the the chromatin threads they are loose so like this there is the mitosis so there is increased mitosis then there is breach of the basement membrane the tumor cells coming down into the dermis they are forming these nest of malignant squamous cells like this nest lobules tongues and along with that when we draw the well differentiated scc then we draw this keratin pearls so this is how the diagram is completed and additionally we can make these lymphocytes because the tumor uh, is uh, infiltrated by the lymphocyte as part of tumor immunity so we can make the lymphocytes in the dermis so uh, let us now see how we draw this diagram so we draw the normal stratified squamous epithelium the basal layers the spinous layer then the granular layer on top of it the keratin stratum corneum then you make the atypical malignant squamous cells which will be round polygonal big pleomorphic and increased in thickness you draw the cytoplasm then you draw the nuclei they will have large nucleus and uh, moderate to abundant cytoplasm some cells will be having high very high nc ratio so you make these uh, nuclei which have irregular nuclear boundaries then you make the in the cytoplasm you show the breach of the basement membrane and in which the cells are uh, growing down into the dermis these are the nests which are forming the keratin pearls so in the center you draw the laminated keratin surrounding that there are the squamous cells then you draw the nuclei in this so these are the nests these are in the keratin pearl central uh, area of keratin deposition and surrounding that there are the nuclei then this nest again nest keratin pearl we can make uh, many keratin pearls in case of a well differentiated scc then complete the diagram by making these blood vessels and lastly the lymphocytes infiltrating the tumor so lastly the labeling so you draw you label the dysplastic squamous epithelium so fill thickness dysplasia is there breach in the basement membrane lymphocytes infiltrating the tumor then this nest of the tumor cells in the sub epithelium or dermis then the this keratin pearls another name for them is horn pearls this is the adjacent normal epithelium so this is how you uh, depict all the different parts of the diagram of squamous cell carcinoma also you label the mitosis so mitosis seen like these loose chromatin threads and this is uh, the completed diagram of uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the skin i hope you find it useful and uh, any feedback and comments they are most welcome in the comment section thank you very much